what makes it so important to have women in your genre specifically? Oh God, I could go to town on this. <laughs> yeah, electronics an interesting one. Yeah, I mean, for sure. It's like ruled by the white man, right? Or they're just white dudes everywhere. <laughs> everywhere you go. The lineups like at festivals. I mean, it's it's not just electronic music, but it, it's specifically, I guess, for electronic music. It's just so deeply underrepresented and so, um, it's so hard. Like, I'll give an example. Before, I think earlier in my career, you would see people in the office going to things like ADE and um, Winter Music Conference in Miami. And it would be so easy for management to select old men to go. And it would really, really annoy me. I'd be like, okay, so you're picking the same dudes like to go, like, obviously we can't all go. Um, but I just, I would notice it over and over again. Just like the dudes are taking this, like, a bro vacation, you know, <laughs> to go and just, it, 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 I really truly believe that having more women in electronic music is of so much importance because there are disgusting people, we won't name names, DJs that have been called out for abuse and just being feral human beings in general. Um, and people got away with that for so long because there weren't enough women in leadership positions. I, I, I'm just horrified to think about how long that was going on for until you know people were able to speak up I'm rambling but um yeah oh no, it's it all good <laughs> yeah it's all important yeah I think going off of that um I'm really lucky to work with Hannah and also on Grimes's team at Create Safe as well just with female producers I think is one of the most rewarding things uh I mean I don't you guys have probably seen that USC study that's like 3% of all like Grammy nominated songs in like the past eight years have been, have been produced by women. Um, and so, I mean, I've experienced it firsthand in studio culture too, like people walking in, introducing themselves to like every guy in the room, but just like not introducing themselves to you and not thinking that you're there for, uh, to work as well. Um, so I feel like it's especially um, just as much as it can be in like the live industry, as Fiona was speaking about, um, and studio culture is really something that needs to improve. And um, yeah, so I feel like that's just something that is definitely, I feel really lucky to work with um, a lot of female producers and also feel important to say that, hey, like they are female producers, like people just don't assume a lot of the time, like even the other day, this publication, they were like, oh, they referred to Hannah as like a vocalist. And I was like, mm, actually, uh, no, she is not just a vocalist. It's really important that this is part of her narrative um, in a polite way. And, and yeah, I think that's just really, really important to bring light to as well. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of assumptions that are made right off the bat. Um, when I was working in dance music and I was tour managing, I'd be in the clubs and nine out of 10 times people would be like, oh, which DJ are you hooking up with? And I'd be like, no, actually I'm their tour manager. And yeah. you're mm -hmm. That and that would happen all of the time. Even like first, I'd shake a promoter's hand and they'd write off the bat, be like, "Oh, are you one of their girlfriends?" And I'd be like, "No, I'm the one you've been on email and calls with for the past two months." And it's just like they're right off the bat, quick to assume that because there's a girl here that she's, especially if you're working with a male artist. I mean, yeah. even to this day, there's countless times people think me and Lido are dating, and I'm just like, "He's my son." Like. <laughs> So I think that there's a lot of assumptions that are being made. And I think the more we support other women and bring women and, and give them these positions, those assumptions will hopefully start to die and people or shift into assuming that they are here for professional reasons and not for other reasons. And that's annoying also because, so what if you're hooking up with somebody that's there? Like why, why does that have to devalue the work that you do? It doesn't for men. It's so, yeah, it's just unfair. That's a really good point, Fiona. Yeah, yeah I, I haven't heard that yet. When we were, um, we were auditioning a band and uh, I remember I, I like, with all the guys that were sitting there, they shook their hands. And then after every audition, every guy tried to hug me. And I was like, hmm, that's, I'm like, hmm. 
and I was always like, like, you know, it's like awkward when someone's like, you're like have a hand in their chest. But I was like, it's so bizarre to me. Cause in all the, my job before, you would never hug anybody. You know, you're like, and who knows what happened with handshakes. I don't know now, but I'm like, it was, it was just crazy to me. This like double standard. And I, I you know, I love your point. It's so true. This like, acu- acu- I mean, I, yeah, I went through like accusations of, you know, of, like sleeping with someone and it's like, she's unprofessional and this, but it was this like witch hunt. And I, and this is pre me too, I will say, but I just was like, it was the craziest I I just couldn't, it was just so surreal because it was like, yeah, the hero versus the hoe, you know, it's like, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so yeah, it's a, it's a double standard for sure. Yeah, you wouldn't know how many times pe- people come in the room and they'll see Trip sitting next to me and they're like, oh, are you his mom? Are you his assistant? <laughs> Are you a sister? And I'm like, no, I'm his manager. So that means I'm that bitch. So, hey. <laughs> you know, so it's like, you know, and then when they say yeah. they're like, oh, 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 okay. Well, I, I'm sorry about that. And I'm like, no, it's fine. But why would you just automatically assume because there's a female in the room, I can't be mm-hmm. the one in charge. I can't be the boss. And you know, the the cool thing with Trippy and his crew, like everyone's super respectful. So they all treat me like I'm the most important person in the room and they step up and they speak up and say, no, you need to introduce yourself to her. They're, they're Charlene, you need to talk to her. So they're very supportive. So I do believe as well, the men also need to step up mm. and recognize because they're gonna be able to influence the cha- and change the temperature and the tone in the room of those guys coming and saying, oh, or is this somebody you're hooking up with? And by the way, if it's somebody you're hooking up with, that is none of their damn business. <laughs> Whatever you want, because nobody is asking all the males in the room if they're hooking up with everybody, so it doesn't matter. But yeah, I really do feel like, you know, I'm blessed to have an artist and a crew that really stand for me. And so I feel like the men have to really just stand up for us and change the narrative in order for everyone to fall, get in formation. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So thank you all for that. I feel like we all could relate to some part of that for sure. (laughs) Probably most of it. Um, But one last question, because we went a little bit over here, but I think it was all worth it. So one last question is if you could give one piece of advice to women who are aspiring artist managers, um, just that's their career goal, what piece of advice would you give them? Just start doing it. Find an artist and figure out a way to help them. Ask them what their goals are and try to help them achieve them. Ask them what their dreams are and make them happen. Cold email, reach out. I've sent so so many crazy things have happened from me finding an email on a Facebook page and just sending a pitch. It's crazy how, how many positive things have come out of that. Just, you know, and I think there's a lot of people who want to get into management, but they don't know how. And I would say just find someone that you're passionate about and go. And to Dorothy's point, I would say, know your worth and know your value. Because as women, everyone that I have, you know, spoken with and has asked me this question, they all have someone that they could start managing immediately. And they're like, and I'll do it for free. And I'm like, you got to put a price on your time. Your time and your knowledge is invaluable. Time is the one commodity that you cannot get back. So you have to put a price on that. We're so eager as women to put ourselves out there and it's, it's great quality, but we undervalue and undercut ourselves. So if you do start reaching out to people, put a price to your time and what that value means to you. So that's my biggest piece of advice. I think also dedication. Like if, if you're, I know how easy it is to be like, oh, I'll just start trying, but I think that don't half-ass it, you know, you have to go in on this if that's what you want. Mm -hmm. It's, it takes up your whole life and you got to be okay with it. Um, Definitely um, don't be scared to stand up for yourself. And, you know, as Charlene was saying, like knowing your worth, but also if you know that there are certain things that you're expecting from your employer, because like Dorothy was saying earlier, like nobody really knows what the fuck they're doing. Like everybody's figuring it out. Every it's ev- like every management company is someone's like startup business. <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you come from like a PR company and you're used to having like 
reviews every three months, every six months or something like that. And that's what you need to grow, you know, then, then communicate that, you know, don't ever expect anything from the person that you're working from, because no matter how nice they are, um, no matter how much they say you're doing a great job, we love you, we need you, they will pay you 45 cents an hour if they can <laughs> and if you don't speak up for yourself and stand up for yourself and and know your value know your worth and and you know don't feel like oh i'm being such a pain in the butt for asking for things that you're supposed to have you know at any at any other job would be a normal thing insurance benefits those kinds of things you know because um e even though even though this is the music business, it's still a business. So they're still your employer. So, you know, everybody starts in a different way. Sometimes you start as like a under the table paid intern, but when things start moving and you know that there's money being made, you got to be able to have those conversations and, and not be scared of they're going to fire me or this is going to happen or, you know, so. Totally. Cause if you're bringing value they're not going to be afraid to lose you. And I, looking back like that, if I could talk to old me, I would have, when they were dumping more and more and more responsibilities on me, I was just taking them because I was humbled and honored that I was running these massive campaigns and making shit happen. But I wasn't getting paid for the additional work I was doing. And that would never happen now, you know? So it's like, if, if I could give advice, I would say, stick the fuck up for yourself and know your worth. Hell yeah. Yeah. And I, oh, you go, Hannah, you can go. Oh, no, you go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you said it first. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's uh, having standards. I totally, oh, I feel that so deeply. And, and I think that there's like, you know, just knowing that you have all the answers and you can choose your team and the people around you and your artists and you need to be a solid unit and that everyone else that comes in, they have to have the same goals and same mentality and they have to be in it with you because we are the like backstage little crew and then we go out and do a performance if we are not solid then this is a mess so it's like making sure you do you can you know uh, we fired plenty of people it's like you can do that it's it's not the world doesn't end if there's a shitty tour manager on a tour you can fire the tour manager and there's one tomorrow and it's like i just didn't know that when i first came in is that everyone is replaceable and knowing that it's like you do not need to put up with bullshit in this industry there's everyone on this i'm sure will help anyone on this you know it's like we will help each other but like having having that knowing that that everyone is here that you have help and it's not just you by yourself you're not alone i think that is like I did not know that for a long time. And it's like, yeah, knowing now that if I can just reach out and ask for help, I will receive. So. Yeah. Going off what you're saying, Kate, just in general, like navigating the industry, it's just so helpful to, and it's harder than you think it might be just to like find people you fuck with, particularly women in the industry. And it takes a lot of initiative because most of the people or good majority of people in the music industry are pretty fake and kind of just gonna you know, go after certain people or hang out with certain people because they might have the hottest artist. They think that they might, you know, advance their own career, their own artist in some way. But honestly, you know, taking initiative, like, you know, emailing that person you've been emailing for a while, being like, yo, like, let's meet up or even like going to certain, you know, music events for friends and not necessarily just to, to like network. And I feel like that's something that a lot of like young people who are like trying to get into industry are really obsessed with doing. And it doesn't really end up, you know, people can kind of tell that you're not being genuine. Uh, so I feel like doing that and also just connecting other people and not really expecting anything from it. Like if you see another, if you know another like established female manager and you know, someone else is trying to get up like, and they want to, you know, want to learn from someone that just goes from like any sector of the industry just connect them. Don't ask for credit or a bag or, anything else, uh, I feel like it'll just all come back to you in a positive way. Yeah, guys. Yeah. We're all silent. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. I think that's everyone. Uh, Jazzy, did you share? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, wait, let me make sure. Um, okay. Well, thank you so much to all thank of our you. wonderful panelists. Thank you. I appreciate all of you. Yes. I think we're all going to leave with a little bit more wisdom today.